I'm basically here to answer your question. Sir, could you say if the commission met today? The commission did not. Sir, recently we saw that issues were more balanced or rejected because they were stamped incorrectly. Could you say how soon the commission will uh, address that uh, matter? We saw in Sophia uh, there were, I think, 82 or 83 rejected ballots, and then Mr. Phillips referenced to 101 in another location rejected because. I, I wondered what Mr. Phillips had to say. My own disposition is that in the case of the Sophia not stamped, it is clear that those are legitimate ballot papers because on one hand uh, the not stamped corresponded in number to a similar number stamped. And as I had earlier said here, it's apparent that in that instance, the officer responsible folded the ballot paper horizontally rather than vertically and did place two stamps, which eventually ended up on one half of the ballot and not on the other half. And if one is to make a judgment not merely based on what the law says, but what the law intended. I could hardly see us not admitting those ballots as valid ballots. The Commission itself has not yet adjudicated on the matter, but this clearly falls into one of the three scenarios I had earlier articulated. And I'm looking forward to a sensible, rational and just decision to have those ballots counted. Undoubtedly, when we deal with the observation reports, evidence will have to be taken into consideration. Those, those could be considered as bits of evidence. The chairman was very pellucid previously that evidence must be produced. And if evidence has been produced, then there could be no choice but to see if the evidence justifies the allegation. Mr. Alexander, the evidence, if proven to be correct or right, in some sphere, um, can that have an impact on the election system? I, and even as I ask that question, it seems like a very small number of, say, a list of uh, names were given compared to the margin of votes we're seeing right now. So can it have an impact on, on the elections at all? I don't think that the issue of credibility is merely an issue of comparison of numbers. The issue of credibility has to do with whether the system was corrupted or not. And so from, there's a, therefore my measurement, my yardstick, is not to compare a margin between parties. My yardstick is to, come, is to ask the question, is there evidence that this process has been corrupted? And if it's been corrupted, can we declare it credible? I know you've been asked this question before. What could have possibly failed the safeguards in place to allow somebody who may have been out of the country um, to appear as a voter at so many locations? Let me go back. And I want to go back because my response is not a post-election response. My response is a pre-election response. If the press does its research, you will find that prior to the elections, I was one of the advocates of a new list. Because, in my humble opinion, if you have a bloated list, and notwithstanding what some people are saying, you do have a bloated list. The mere mathematics of a population of 750 persons a school population of 250 persons cannot allow you to have a list of 661 
6161 So we have a bloated list. That's beyond questions, beyond reason. And my disposition was that once you have a bloated list, then you are providing a platform for the possibility of the human factor invade the process. The human factor I meant to be and still mean to be how would biased human beings who are part of the system seek to manipulate that situation. I've also in the past post pre-elections indicated that we have a problem with what I call then the demography of the polling station. A demography which allows for in polling stations for people of one community in the main to be present in those polling stations. My argument was and is, and this has nothing to do with any particular party, it has to do with the reality of society. And if you have that demography and you have a bloated list, then you are providing an opportunity for things untoward to happen. Even with all the safeguards in place? With all the safeguards, if you check the court, where there's a record of the petition, you can see that parties have in the past argued that this has occurred. But sir, arguing something occurred does not necessarily... I say that to say that there are parties now who are arguing it can't occur. But they have in the past argued it can occur. These safeguards are safeguards not perfect nor absolute. And what you have to perfect is not just the safeguards but the entire system. And the extent of which we've noted is the system remains imperfect and allows for a certain demography and the human factor to impact the system. No, the fact of the matter is that where we are at, there is proof that the system has been breached. So it has been breached because there is sufficient evidence to suggest, as I stand here, that persons who are not in the list, indeed, were voted for. So there must have been some kind of official list of electors. Persons who were on the official list of electors, but who were not in the country, have been voted for. I have seen at least one letter from overseas Guyanese. But sir, sir, sir. The list that GCOM sent to the police, oh. GCOM never checked to ascertain whether the ballots were in fact issued to these persons. These names, serial numbers, <laughs> GCOM never checked. GCOM collected a list. And but sent you it seem on. to understand the system. No, no, the public let me, officer said that. I don't know what she said. She said that the list was collected and sent. I don't know what she said. But let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. A list was presented, and that list was presented in keeping with the allegation that here are persons whose serial numbers are identified in the workstations who have been voted for. Point one. Point two. There is the scope for reconciliation and correlation. In the main, even where we have not been able to identify the OLE of the presiding officer, which is a legal source of determining who and how many voted, there is little disparity where we have more than one OLE, little disparity. And so one can determine the number of voters. One can determine the number of voters. If there's a correlation between that number of voters and the print list, and the extraction of names from that list which were ticked off, then one can hardly come to any other conclusion than that those persons were voted for if the evidence now suggests 
that those persons were out so of the country. So there's a, there's a current. Hearing evidence, we're hearing proof. But all we have, for example, we have your word against another commissioner's I, word, then we have a. My word is a logical word. construct, it's not just words. Exactly, a logical construct and not reflective of the realistic situation. It's a logical construct, reflective of facts. We're my still construct we're is. Still no, I'm not hypothetical. I, nothing I said just now is hypothetical. There's a list, and that list has a number of persons who are ticked off. There are ballots in the box that corresponds with the list to show that those persons who are ticked off would have voted. Right? Nothing hypothetical about that. There is an allegation based on serial numbers now accompanied by names that those persons who are ticked off have within their number persons who have precisely, been said to precisely. be there's out an of the country. that these names were ticked off, but GCOM never actually verified whether that was the case. When, never verified what? Whether the names were actually ticked off. Whether the process were in the workstation is that when the people are making the allegations, make them, they verify in the workstation that no, those sir, names are ticked off. list of allegations came separately. Separate from where? That was the APMU long list of 200 names. 200 and they verified names. which of those names were ticked off. And based on that verification... No, no, sir. The APMU did not verify any of those names. You were in those stations? I have enough. The VP, the APMU verified the serial numbers that were ticked off. Anybody who's involved in the election process verifying the serial number can go to this document and identify the names. That's the fact. This is not something to be argued, it's a fact. My construct is based on fact. My construct is not in imagination. It's based on fact. Irrefutable fact. But it's not the same case of um, these names are being these persons are coming out to say that they are very A man has written to said to say that he is supposedly one of the persons and it is not true. Yes, and he's also asked right. for proof that there is something to say that right. he voted. But he was one of the persons who people claimed in the public domain was in the country and therefore had the right to vote. And the man is saying, I was not there. No, sir. The man said he's, his name was on the list purportedly out of the country and he confirmed that he was The man, two things happened. An interesting party went public with this man's name to say that this is one of the persons who allegedly was out of the country and voted. That's what the interesting party said. The other, the man himself has said, look, the punish my name, you shooting the allegation that I was voted for. And I want to say, I was not in the country at the time, and therefore, if there was anything about me voting, it is an impersonation. That's what the man said. Mr. Alexander, um, the clock is proceeding very quickly, uh, and my main conclusion well beyond the gazetted uh, deadline. I doubt it. The gazetted deadline in the amendment is the 13th of. June. We are now only counting District 4. All the other districts, for all intents and purposes, have been concluded. Subject to the presentation of the report with observation reports for the purpose of determining the credibility of that court, or those courts. We are obligated to do so. Yeah, and, and what, what, what time frame are you going to do that? When the recount is over and you have those days to review? There has been an effort to do so, but at minimum, at minimum, it has to be done after the 13th when the CEO presents the composite report of the tabulation and the observer, the observation, at minimum.